And it's almost like this concept of um, permanent death, uh, which sounds like a, like belongs on this chalkboard, right? Like a real bit of a downer. But then you read about what permanent death is like, no, no, you're thinking of clinical death. Permanent death is in role playing video games when you lose your character and that's it. You can't re-enter the game, um, kind of Caprica-like. And uh, that is, uh, to me, it's, it's, here's a list of the games, by the way, that no longer feature permanent death because it's not very popular among players. You'd like to have another life. And I wonder how much people feel in this zone that what you're doing is one, in, a phenomenon in which you have endless lives. As soon as it goes political, as soon as it goes commercial, as soon as it involves an ethical dimension, like Star Wars Kid, there is an element of permanence to what can be happening that makes it hard to just have the fun part of it. And uh, what better example than uh, this, uh, several years ago, the wake in World of Warcraft for a player who had died. The character hadn't died. This is clinical death we're talking about. I want to be clear in the exposition. Suffered a stroke, she died, and her friends in her guild chose to hold, open to other guilds too, a wake for her, and they actually lined up to pay their respects, at which point uh, Serenity Now, another guild, came in and killed them all. <laughs> and <laughs> With malice aforethought. <laughs> this was permanent death, not clinical death, in the first degree. And the question is, did Serenity now act unethically? And I don't know. I, I don't know. What do you, th you tell me. Did they act unethically? It was trying to take a game and make it real, to recognize that there's still people behind the characters. They're not all NPCs. But there was also an element of like, dude, it's a game. You are taking it too seriously. You will die in the game. And, <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I'm just so tempted. I, just at, at the count of three, give me a hum if you think that Serenity now did something wrong under these facts. One, two, three. All right, now at the count of three, give me a hum if you think they were like just fine. One, two, three. Okay, all right. <laughs> we have the O's and the U's, and some of you hummed for each. I respect that. Um, one of you was your real character and the other was your online <laughs> character. And that kind of gets to the question of to what extent is what this is doing the escapism that I mentioned earlier and bless it. Like there's a reason we have escapism. And I almost think of it like, do people remember the band Menudo? Yeah? <laughs> All right, right. Now, when I say the band Menudo, I'm talking about the platonic form of the band Menudo because, of course, as each of its members got to a certain age, they were expelled from the band and a younger person was put in their place. That was the essence of Menudo. It was kind of self-regenerating. And um, I think of it also like Logan's Run. I don't know if people remember Logan's Run, right? The gem in your hand. Yes, exactly. And when the gem turns red, you are not happy because clinical death awaits uh, for the uh, crime of being old. And it is kind of the question then to us of, is this phenomenon itself for which we gather, one for which it's just its moment, it's a turn of the century kind of thing, it'll have its fun, it'll be done, and then there'll be a completely other set of phenomenons that maybe will occupy the kind of people that are occupied by this right now. That's Christina's opening of, when we did RaffleCon, we didn't want to put a Roman numeral next to it. Or is it, no, this kind of thing is here to stay, but the participants in it may do it for a while and then move on kind of like chewing tobacco. It's like there's a time and a place for spontaneity, but then you get beyond it and you move uh, on. And uh, I don't know, I mean, like I see people uh, citing Corinthians uh, about it's like time to put away childish things. Come on, man up sort of thing. Man up and read the Bible as literal truth. And, um, <laughs> um, or is it C.S. Lewis's wonderful quote, uh, here captured by my little pony, um, in which the thing I'm putting away is the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown 
up. And the, to me, the, the key word there, narrowly topping out childishness, is fear. So much of this gets back to the idea of not apologizing <laughs> for who you are, for acknowledging it, for owning it, and for saying, you know what, like, so be it. Like, there it is. It's who I am. And that is like the least ironic thing I can think of. And it's just so funny that we do it in this ironic way, but underneath, it's this declaration that says, difference is okay. In fact, I totally embrace it. And like, you know what? The best thing I can do if I'm in that locker is have that kind of smirk, at least inside, because otherwise they'll hit you a little more. Um, <laughs> but to know that they can't break the spirit that says fear is the mind killer, trademark. Um, so once you get empowered like that, you realize just how powerful you are. Uh, in the Harvard-Yale game of 2004, the uh, Harvard Stadium was packed and the Harvard Spirit team went up and down uh, the aisles handing out North Korean style colored paper to hold up at the right moment to send out a message to the Yale side of the field. And as the moment arrived, it actually turned out that it was not the Harvard Spirit team. It was the Yale Spirit team going up and down the aisles handing out the, the, the paper to the Harvard people. And when the moment came up, <laughs> they... Uh... <laughs> So in this distributed environment, <laughs> it's very powerful. You can get people to do things. And what's, a great, what's most delicious about this is how lustily they're cheering, <laughs> right? They're not just giving out the message. It's not just like, kick me on their back. It's like, kick me. <laughs> and the question is, how will we deploy that force? And in some ways, the most countercultural way to deploy this force is against the unfunny cynicism of our mainstream institutions. Now, I don't know, we always think the world is kind of coming apart, but this time, Charlie Brown, I'm kind of wondering. You look at our religious institutions, our media institutions, our political institutions, goes without saying, and you see such deeply embedded cynicism that even individual members of these institutions, which are systems, don't feel like they can escape them. If you're like the CEO of Fox News, it's not clear you could do anything to like change it. I don't know, maybe, it'd be an interesting question. But in that environment, the actual subversive move to me is represented something like by the Reddit subboard on random acts of kindness, of like looking for ways, semi-ironically, to take people and one person at a time or in groups actually make their lives better. So I stood in line for the photo and um, it's kind of amazing to think about this. Like I think this will be our engagement photo. And, um, <laughs> It was like, again, this kind of joyless march, like you will have three seconds and take your pay. And people were treating it like Olin Mills, like as if these were their family. And they would just stand like, yes, like we were hanging out and then we thought we'd take a portrait together. <laughs> and like, so there's something that didn't feel totally authentic to me about that. And um, so we came in and we're like, we're okay with Goofy. Like, you know, it's fine, guys. And um, I love how Patrick Stewart is just like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> And Michael Thorne is like, I don't have to wear makeup. And um, Brent Spiner is like, yeah. Um, and Will Wheaton, God bless him. Right? Right? That is the hero of this photo. Will Wheaton totally knows who he is. He owns it. He loves it. That is our representative in these photos and the guy who kind of steals uh, the show. And to me, like, that is Tron guy. That is people who own who they are. And if you're here, I suspect you're already in that place. So um, in conclusion, the world is pretty and everyone should be quiet and enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh.